Hey guys, so what's going on? It's Fishing Journey back with you guys here again. Um, so kind of for this video, I had a little bit of an idea to do something a little different. Um, I'm gonna kind of take you guys through how I store my uh, hard swim baits, soft swim baits, um, as well as uh, show some clips of me catching some South Florida bass on a couple of these lures um, that I've had a chance to get out and throw. Um, I am new to the swim bait game um, so I just kind of got a rod for Christmas or kind of I did um, so I got a 13 fishing uh, defy series 8 foot rod it's a heavy action um, with a lose super duty speeds pull super duty reel uh, with 25 pound fluorocarbon is kind of what I'm using now um, so that's kind of the setup side I couldn't bring it with me here today um, but you'll see it in a couple clips that I play here so first off I guess we'll go through the ones that I throw the most so I store my soft swim baits in a um, just a Plano tackle box here, uh, one of the three latch ones. So kind of, it's just in no particular order. Um, first I've got, this is, I don't know the brand actually, I know that they're called the Death Wish um, and they sell them at Dick's Sporting Goods. I don't know much else other than that, I know they're about a, let's see, they're about a, well, probably a uh, probably about a four. Uh, they're about a four inch swim bait right now. I've got this one on a five aught um, kind of weightless swim bait hook with a screw lock on it. I like how the bottom, specifically on this one, I like how much it lays flat. Like I can run my finger along the top um, and it doesn't really get poked, um, but it does really squish um, kind of, you know, when the fish bites it from behind in that. Um, or head on. Um, the other thing I like about this one is it folds really easily like with little to no effort I mean it folds pretty easily so when those fish come up and get it they'll be able to get the full bait in their mouth. Um, I don't know I'll put a link in the description um, for all of the swim baits that I show in this video or all the ones at least that I can find online. Uh, this guy's kind of missing an eye through him for peacock bass the other day and didn't really get any luck but um, so that was kind of the first swim bait that I got actually I think this is the first swim bait bigger swim bait I guess we can call them like bigger profile swim bait that I got next we'll go to these are I'm in a whole bunch of different colors so I'll show a couple ways that I rig them oh uh, so that one was on a five odd so these are that's a really small hook for this but these are all so those two and this one are all um, Guggen Squad I believe they're called Saucy Swimmers yeah uh, so these are all Google Scholar Sauce Simmers. This one's in like a white, a pearl white with a silver flake on the bottom. I have this one rigged up on, I believe it's a 3 aught. Um, it's a 4, 3 8, 3 8 inch swim bait. It's a little bit of the smaller swim bait thing. I throw this one on uh, just like my regular spinner bait rod or something like that. Um, and I've just got this one with a little VMC weighted swim bait hook with a little um, willow leaf blade on the bottom of it. I find I have pretty good luck on this one, um, on those lakes that have a lot of shad or minnow populations. I get a lot of uh, decent bites on this one. Um, haven't really tried it down here yet, um, so we'll see about those. Uh, same thing with this one. This one's just kind of a, a sexy shad color, for lack of a better term, or the actual um, thing. Same hook, uh, same weight. I believe it's a 3 16 ounce weighted VMC swim bait hook, uh, 3 up. And then this one is just a weighted or an, a weightless uh, four aught EWG hook. Um, nothing really special about this one. Uh, this is kind of like my top water swim bait um, as far as soft plastics go. Um, I try to get underneath the water with a lot of these. This one I just kind of use as a, a soft jerk bait on the surface. Um, I've had pretty good luck. This is the Plo, Pro Blue Red color. Um, I've had pretty good luck on this one for largemouth. So. I guess we'll start with, we'll keep with the uh, game. This one's kind of crunched. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick up on any of that, but this one I used the other day. So this is a Gambler Lures Easy Swimmer, just their regular one. Um, in a second here, I'll show you the Big Easy is what they call it. Um, so this one, I don't know the actual color, but it's like a blue green um, with gold and silver flake in it. I've got this one on a five aught um, VMC three, I believe this one, yeah, this one's a 3 16 ounce um, as well. I like this size um, for pond hopping at least, this, the weight size, because um, it does sink down into the bottom probably with a count of like five. Um, in most spots that I fish, it'll hit the bottom. 
and I'll just kind of reel it and you'll see in a couple clips that I'll put in here um, this has been the most productive swim bait I've thrown so far um, it folds I mean, really really easily not as easily as the the death wish swim bait but I mean it's still got it um, Got a little one on the uh, gambler lure. Oh, he spit that. He almost landed in my lap. All right, buddy. Oh no, come back. You're not, there's no water there, buddy. Not a bad little guy on the uh, gambler lures. Uh, easy swimmer, just the regular size. I'm gonna try to let him go back. Got another one on here. That's a better one. Come this way, come this way, come this way, not that. There we go. That's definitely a smaller one that was on there earlier. All right, buddy. All right, buddy. I'm gonna get you unbuttoned here. I think that's the best one of the day so far. All right, get your little damn, get your little flick out. There you go. All right, cool. You're not coming off that. Sorry. Come on, dude. Stay still. Come on. Just let me grab your lip, and then you'll unpin you and go back home. Okay. Come in bigger sizes, so I believe this is the Big Easy Gambler Big Easy. This one is six inches, I believe. Maybe four and six, four and five, maybe. It's either four and five or five and six. I think it's four and five. Yeah, I think it's four and five. Um, this one's in Tennessee Shad. I know that one's in Tennessee Shad. This was the first big I'm going to consider it because it's on a. Let's see. This one's on a half ounce uh, five watt VMC. Uh, swim bait hook as well same brand i do like vmc hooks you'll notice i throw them a lot um i find that the the most or the most cost effective um but for the best quality product um the hook points stay pretty sharp i've only had to sharpen the hook once um on this one i caught i think it was like six fish um in an evening span of maybe like two hours um so this one I definitely sit on the bottom and I'll just kind of reel it along the bottom and that tail gets a lot of kicking action and then two reel twitches and it pops up out of that grass and as soon as it pops up out of the grass that bass normally has it um, kind of same thing working this one um, you'll see a couple clips here I'll pull um, a couple I believe they were like right at a right at a pound um, on the four inch ones at a pond near campus here um, so that's the gambler ones. Those are the those are the swim baits that I've had the most success on. Um, this one, I believe, I caught the fir my first ever lake fish on this one. Um, I'll put that clip in here, but it was at um, Lake Harris, well, the Harris chain of lakes, um, on a small lake on the outside or like a little through a little canal. Um, th I mean, the fish were just busting on shad and little bait fish all over. Um, my dad caught, I believe it was like eight fish that day on a little Rapala jerk sh uh, jerk shad or jerk, I don't know, it's a jerk bait. Um, and then I caught one on the bigger swim bait. It was like 15 ounces, but I mean, it was on a big swim bait. Um, 
that is something about swim bait fishing that's I guess different for me like I always assumed like it's big swim bait fishing you're gonna catch big fish uh, no matter what but you can catch pond bass or like the average pond bass and you know like one two three pounders on these bigger swim baits um, so this one I caught I think the total count for this one is four on and then total count for this one so far is probably like maybe up in the double digits like 10 maybe 11 I don't know I'd have to go back and count them or like on, on the pictures count them uh, I've caught one on this and then just kind of as I'm going I'm counting them so got another one Chase got one. Almost bait. Okay. All right. Chase got one. Oh, he got in the boat. <laughs> Woo! Are you still recording? Yep. The full monkey on the back. What did I say mine was? Uh, oh, he was not coming, coming off of that. There's my we gotta wait for them to do that again. They're keying in on the freaking toads. That's not a toad. Shut your face. I need as much weight as I can get for this. I'm gonna need that scale. Marty fan. He's ahead of me. 15 ounces. Give him a little fish flip back in there. All right. Squad Saucy Swimmers were the first small swim baits I threw. Um, so I've got a couple fish on there. Now, the next kind of category of baits, so those are, I would consider like your true soft plastics. Like they're not, they don't come pre rigged. They, you kind of buy your hooks, buy your baits, and put them together. So then the next kind of baits that I'm about to move into are the ones that come pre rigged. These are still in the soft bait category, but come pre rigged. So this one was actually the first pre-rigged swim bait yeah i bought that was a soft bait um this is a bass pro shops brand just very generic it, it's kind of supposed to imitate the, the mega bass um, mag draft i have one but i didn't bring it with me so i'll put a clip in when i get to that one um, and i just put a hook bonnet on it because i have the tendency to like hook either my clothes or like my fingers when i'm trying to take them out um, so basically i'll take the little bonnet off so i can show you guys what it does so comes a little treble hook this is still the stock um stock um treble hook that it came with i didn't really change them because i'm still kind of new to this i just learned that you're really supposed to swap them um so there's really two options you can do with these you can just kind of leave this the treble hook you know like that and just kind of swim it through there um or you can there's actually a little slit on the bottom you can tuck that one of the hooks into and it'll kind of stay for lack of a better term, weedless, but that's as weedless or weeded as I guess you could get, weedless as you can get. Um, I've not thrown this one a whole bunch. Um, it is in the gizzard shag color, so I tend to have pretty good luck on like that gray, white belly, kind of like that Tennessee shad, like I was saying earlier. I have a lot of luck on that, um, but never really thrown this one a lot. I mean, I'm probably gonna throw it in a couple days, um, you know, when I get a chance to go out, so. Next ones I'm gonna move into are still the pre-rigged, um, but they're the top rigged ones. So that one kind of has that bottom, that bottom hook. So the next one is a, ooh, it's kind of dirty from the grass the other day, but these are live target. Um, this one's a sunfish or bluegill style swim bait. This one is in, I believe it's a three inch model. Um, I've had a lot of fish on this little right here, a lot of peacock bass. Um, this lure does go places where I would not throw, you know, something like this, where that's got a lot of that, that beefy, um, or that treble hook style, um, hook on it. I throw this a lot. Um, the, the idea behind it is that this little fin up here kind of covers it when it goes to that grass. So when it's going through the grass, it doesn't catch any of the stuff. Um, this one I have, I've noticed that like after a couple, um, like long cast or like you're coming in and out of grass just kind of like bobbing it up and down like almost like a like a texas rig you're just kind of like fluttering it up and down um that this hook will get some grass on it or like this top fin will fold down because it's got heavy grass if you fish kind of like the nasty stuff kind of uh, like a couple ponds around here that i fish um so this one i would say it's got a little hook here where that you could put a treble hook on the bottom of it or like a little uh stinger hook or something like that 
I've never really thought about doing it because I mean it does this bait has a really tight action where a lot of these baits before they've got a really good wobble this one's got a very very tight and it's got everything to do with that tail that little vortex tail it has the tightest wobble of any of the swim baits I'm going to show you today because this one's the smallest um I've had really good luck uh, I believe this is the pumpkin seed color that's good um for the let's see I've caught peacock bass on this one I've caught one large mouth on it but a pretty small one um, so yeah about the bluegill spawn or when bass are on beds I typically will throw this um, it's a little bit smaller presentation it gets in there um, it's got a top weight or like the hook kind of goes through and it's got a weight up here so it'll go head down like this so you can kind of bob it along the bottom and those fish just absolutely crunch it because um, it imitates exactly what a feeding bluegill would do um, so next, same brand, Live Target. I'm going to show you the side that's not missing an eye. Um, this is the Golden Shiner one. You'll see that tail's way floppier than the smaller one, I mean. So this one I've caught, this was my actual first big swim bait. This is a one ounce, I believe it's like a 10 or 11 odd, maybe 12 odd uh, hook with the same rig. It's got that little, uh, uh, I guess accessory attachment on the bottom to put a stinger hook eyelet. He's missing an eye because the bass, like he ate it head on. There was no doubt. Um, this one I like a little bit better. The top fin is a little taller, um, so it does like you'll see it, it'll catch my finger a couple times. But like, it does tend to be a little bit more weedless than the smaller one with that smaller um, top fin. This one, same thing. It's got a pretty tight action. It's got a little bit wider wobble than the sunfish style smaller style baits um this one is it's like five inches or five and a half inches maybe the six no it's definitely the five and a half inch model um it's the smallest size that you can get in the golden shiner so um i've had one fish commit and get it to the shoreline and all that i'll put that clip in here this one mate oh my god and it's a good one. Oh my god oh get up here oh he came off he came off it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I'm gonna throw that down. All right, buddy, where'd you go? All right, there you go, there's your mouth. Got one on the giant swim bait. Yes! Grab out my scale here. One pound, 10 ounces. So that was on the live target. Oh, gotta get it over here. I can actually grab onto it. So this fish was on the live target golden shiner. Absolutely choked it, but came off right at the shoreline. All right, we'll get this guy back in the water here slide through all this crap try to get them as close as I can and there he goes yes I don't know that I'll put that clip in here um, but I really haven't thrown it much after that I threw it a little bit when we went to Harris on um, the same day that I caught the Tennessee shad uh, gambler lure fish um, wasn't having much luck on it this one I really like to let it sink all the way down to the bottom. It'll flutter all the way down, and I just kind of slow retrieve it right over the uh, the grass or structure or anything like that. And every so often I'll give it a little two twitch and let it sink a little bit, and then two twitch. You'll see I do that a lot. I mean, it's if a fish is following it and they're just kind of after it, and then two twitches, and it's like right as that happens, I've noticed the fish will grab it, and you'll feel that little tick right on the end of your line. Uh, so yeah, the, I would definitely recommend the live target lures for anybody who's just starting or the gambler uh, Big Easy's or um, they sell bigger ones. They sell like eight inch ones. I'm hoping to get a couple of those soon um, of the gambler ones with the right, you know, gear. This hook's a little small for this one. I'd like maybe a six or an eight on a hook just so that it goes back to that second part. 
Um, so hopefully I'll get a couple bigger sizes for those to show you guys, but definitely if you're a beginner, I would recommend either any of the Gambler swim baits or the Live Target ones as far as soft plastic uh, swim baits go. So that will complete the soft plastic um, side of the swim baits that I have currently. Um, I do have the Mega Bass, Mega Bass Mag Draft. Um, it's in, I believe it's MB Gizzard is like the brand coloration of it. Um, I tragically uh, closed the tail in the tackle box uh, before I really knew what I was doing with swim baits and how important that tail was. Um, I accidentally closed it trying to get you know out fishing or back home from fishing or something like that and I closed the tail in it so it's got a little bit of damage now but I'm hopefully gonna get some swim bait uh, some soft plastic mold it or uh, some kind of soft plastic glue uh, to put that tail back together it still swims okay I threw it a little bit the other day um, but just not the same kind of wobble as it had before so hopefully they're gonna get another one of those or um, fix that one up uh, as well as a couple of the bluegill style ones I'm hoping to get the because after a few casts you'll notice like if you have to re um, screw in that screw lock you'll notice that you'll get like a perfect core uh, right into that right where that screw lock will go um, so hopefully I'll get a, uh, a swim bait mold or swim bait fix it or I believe there's like a couple brands that sell it so that'll complete the soft plastics now let's move on to here. So next, let me just roll it up real quick so I can show you guys. So I got this off of Amazon. I believe it was like maybe $15. It's just a Plano, um, like a roll lure wrap. So it just kind of unfolds. It's pretty long actually and it's pretty wide um, for those bigger baits. Um, it's got Velcro pockets and it's got a like an aired like a mesh on the back so you can air out your baits because um, they do like they'll rust. So Normally I would have a, in this bottom one here, I would have a Bass Dash, I believe it's called like, I don't know, I'll leave the link in the description down below, um, but it's the biggest glide bait um, one that I've got, the swim bait, or glide bait that I have now. Um, I believe it comes in at just under, just over two ounces. Um, I mean, it's got a really loud clacking noise to it. I'm hopefully gonna throw in a couple clips here of me actually fishing with that. I'm gonna go this weekend and uh, try to catch a couple more on swim baits and glide baits. Um, so I got that one. And then this was actually my first glide bait. This is just, again, just a regular XPS um, shad pattern glide bait. It's got a softer, soft-ish tail. It's kind of still like a hard plastic. Um, still with the stock hooks on it, I've been one of the front hook back into place um, one time, but I think I'm gonna swap these hooks out. I just have to find the time to swap them out. Um, pretty good bait. You can see it got absolutely crunched on by a uh, peacock bass. Um, it's got a little bit of noise to it, but not a ton. Um, it's got a really subtle, just kind of, if you just reel it straight, it'll just kind of waver back and forth. Um, the problem that I have with this bait specifically, it was only like, I think it was like $5 because it was on sale or something like that because I had the new series or something like that coming out. Um, this is the smallest one I got just because at the time I didn't have a swim bait rod. I'm going to go back and hopefully buy the bigger version of this and maybe it'll be a little bit better. But when I tie the double uni knot to, or a polymer knot even, to this, uh, this split ring up front, and I've even tried it without the split ring, just that straight nose it tends like if you twitch it it'll tend to roll over like that you know it'll just kind of do a it'll be swimming and then all of a sudden it'll just roll over and then it'll kind of float back up this way which is good because that means the bait you know is bottom heavy and that'll stay if you're just reeling it but some of these glide bait fish that i've i've had follow in or you know chase after it don't they'll they'll pull right off if it rolls over on its back like that it'll completely throw the fish off um, so I'm hopefully going to get the bigger size in this one. I actually have a Bait Sanity Glide Bait, the Antidote, I believe it's a 7.5 or 7.7 um, inch coming in sometime this week or next early next week. So I'm going to hopefully do another video with just that Bait Sanity because that's the first true um, branded glide bait. 
that I've bought that's a, from a bigger um, name brand. So that's this one. So now, so that's really all my glide baits. So I guess that would be like its own category. This is like just glide baits. Now, I only have one wake bait, but I'm gonna put it in the swim bait category, just the jointed swim bait category. This is a Fish Labs uh, bluegill wake bait. Um, it's got the bill. It does, it's got a straight bill. I mean, it is straight as all get out. So three segments or two segments after the front, I guess. One, two here. Tail is soft, um, the top fins are hard. Um, it is a very tall profile. Um, it's, I mean, it fits in the palm of my hand. So um, it's a very tall profile. These hooks I did switch out. They were, I switched them out for VMCs, I believe they were. Uh, number twos, I, yeah, I think they were VMC number twos. Um, this bait, I love this bait. Um, if the fish, I know a couple spots that they are absolutely key in on that bluegill um, during the spawning season and the um, either the bluegill and the bass spawn both of them they'll kind of key in on that bluegill um, thing uh, the bluegill bite so this is a red ear bluegill um, I picked this color up I got it from Dix it was on sale I think these are originally like somewhere in the $15 range um, so I got it for like maybe 10 I've not caught a fish off of this yet I've had a lot of bites um, and they've popped off just because I wasn't using the right gear. This was pre or circa me getting a actual true swim bait rod. So I think this one is like half an ounce. Um, it's a fast, like just like I sometimes will burn it and then I'll twitch it and it'll do like almost like a, a 180, but just barely underneath 180. Um, and as soon as I've done that, I've gotten fish to come up and kind of like, you know, clap at it or um, they kind of hit it and knock it out of the water. So I'm hopefully going to do more with this um, once it gets a little bit warmer because um, it's not quite springtime here in Florida. Um, we're getting there. Though. We're getting really close to that bluegill spawn and the second bass or the first bass spawn of 2021. So that was this one. This one's a pretty good bait. I would say for beginners because you can just straight reel it and you get a really good action off of it because of that bill in the front. Um, the last two baits I have in here, these are both in that jointed hard bait category. Um, so this one is the Mike Buka Baby Bull Shad. Um, this is actually like one of the first ones because I was part of, uh, I got these off of Mystery Tackle Box, uh, or Carl's Bait and Tackle, I guess it is now. Um, when these first came out, I actually went and bought one of these. The the thing I like about this is it has, I mean, it is the most life, it's got that, that paintbrush or brush style tail. I've kind of messed it up a little bit, um, running it up along the grass and hitting it along little things. You'll see a couple little scars here and there. Um, I swapped these out for VMC one, like treble hook number ones, and then the front is a two, because I upped the front, because I found a lot of fish were hitting it. At, or like the peacock bass I was rolling it um, onto their beds and they were hitting it from the front and that one that one x hook was not doing it it would bend out every time so I, I think they're 2x size one and then this front is bigger one by one size plus I find it kind of it keeps the baits tail up and the, the front goes a little deeper like falls down a little bit um what I don't like about this bait is a lot I mean it makes a lot of noise and it creaks um of course I had this for almost two years now um, I've caught one peacock bass off of this specific lure um, and then well yeah and then I had one before this that was in a different color and lost it to about a five um, pound peacock bass so it definitely needs some more attention I throw this one on uh, like a just a regular like spinner bait or um, chatterbait kind of rod um, it is, I believe it's only like 0.75 of an ounce, maybe? No, the other one's 0.75, the bullgill, and then this one's might be half an ounce. Um, so it's got a really lifelike motion. I mean, you can see it's got a full, like, I'll just do that for you guys. I mean, it's got a full range of motion. Um, yeah, not really much else to say about it. I mean, just a, a solid, small soulmate if you don't want to go to that next level and spend the, you know, sometimes a lot of money. 
um, to get that bigger swim bait or like the bigger glide baits or even the bigger like soft plastics like um, the Working Class Zero uh, Citizen series or the Battle Shad series, um, you know, or the Hinkle Shad um, as one of the the jointed style baits. That I think that thing's like I think they have a nine and eleven and a twelve inch one. So I I mean I'm not even close to that range yet. I don't have the gear to throw that. I need to go one more size up. Um, but yeah, definitely a better small bait, um, good pond hopping bait, solid pond hopping bait. Um, I throw this a lot sometimes during the summer um, and early springtime. I find myself throwing this a lot because the shad here um, at a couple locations are you know pushed up shallow and the bass are pushed up shallow right behind them and they're sitting on those ledges and I'll just let that bait sink down maybe three seconds and just start rolling it. And then every so often do like a little twitch, like a rod twitch instead of a real twitch. Do a rod twitch, that thing will just dart, and then I'll get that that little tick and I'll kind of reel down on them. Uh, so not a lot of luck on this one yet. Gonna do some more with that in the future. And the last one I have is the I guess the second newest one, third newest one if you include the new bait sanity one. This is the Buka Bull, Baby Bullgill. Um, same thing from Carl's Bait and Tackle. I haven't thrown this one yet. Um, the only reason why is I have not had a chance to truly get out and go swim bait fishing for a couple hours. So my plan, let me just check my phone here. So my plan is to go this weekend and throw a little bit more variety. Um, and I'll put those clips in at the end if I you know, catch anything on any of the the baits that I've said before or this one this one's just got a really cool paint job and I couldn't pass it up I mean it's got that iridescent glow on it too it's a it's a bluegill bait with bluegill coloring it's like OG bluegill still got that brush tail you can see this one's like almost in perfect condition because I haven't really used it and I haven't really stored it in anything other than this because um, that tail I, I can't you know impress you guys enough that getting the right storage will help pay dividends in the future because you won't mess up your tails and for a lot of the hard baits like the glide baits and that they don't have like that soft bristle or like the soft plastics like they'll have like the just the soft plastic tail or i even know some glide baits that have a soft plastic tail and if you bend those out of shape there is nothing you can do about it i mean most of them they just stay there i mean so this one is good this one is i believe like 0.75 ounces or like three quarters of an ounce um, I did, again, I switched these ones out for VMC uh, one, number one treble hooks, um, just in the nickel. I also shortened up the uh, shanks on them a little bit. The ones that came were a little bit longer than this one, maybe about there. Um, so I did a little bit shorter shanks because I found that um, with the longer shanks, the bass could actually, I was noticing that the bass were when I twitch it, they were going to bite it, but then they realized that there's the hooks there. So I'm hoping that by getting a little bit smaller, they kind of, as it's swimming, kind of fall in that little resting spot there, and that they'll just kind of rotate back and forth. So yeah, uh, more to come on this one. I'll probably spend a day just throwing the baby bull gill and the baby bull shad. That'll be a good video to come up um, soon, and then I'll spend a day doing glide baits, and you know maybe a day doing the weight baits and stuff like that. So that is all. I think for now um, so kind of what's what's on the horizon here is again I have that bait sanity antidote coming um, other than that I've got a couple fishing videos that are going up of myself doing some saltwater um, fishing I did go saltwater fishing once over the, the break and the Christmas break at least that was when I was home from school and we had pretty good luck I caught one snook tons of snapper and schoolmaster snapper um, as well as like a couple different porgies and pinfish my brother I think believe he caught it blue no that was the last trip but um, I'm gonna do some more saltwater stuff for you guys as well as some more swim bait things um, I'm also gonna do a lot more videos like this kind of going through like how I do my tackle or like how my rods are set up and you know my kind of way behind you know each way that I start you know pulling out my different fishing gear or you know how I decide to go you know a Google Maps thing so lots of videos to come in the future um, this is the first video of 2021 so happy new year everybody it's kind of the end of January so I'm a little late on that one um, but yeah so I'll put any more clips of if I catch anything this weekend um, on any of the swim baits so 
I'll put that clip, those clips potentially here, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, we're a growing channel. I actually just got sponsored as a pro staff member of Wu Tungsten. Um, so they're a tungsten brand. They have tungsten swim bait hooks up to 5 aught. Um, lots of tungsten flipping weights. <clears throat> And they also have this new bundles um, feature for like different states. Um, I believe Florida, Alabama, Texas, and something else. So there's like four or five states that they have different pack, packs for. Um, so it's kind of like their idea of like what you should be using in those states or like what kind of weights you should be using in those states. So I actually have for you guys, and I'll put this again in the description below. So if you guys want 10% off your first order for Wu Tungsten, you guys go to wutungsten.com and type in the code Wu, W O O, friends 10. Wu, W O O, friends, F R I E N D S, 10 at checkout, and you guys will get 10% off your first order. Now, these tungsten weights are never chip. Like it, I mean, I have seen people throw them and cast them up on top of, you know, big dams up north and bring them back and they're perfectly fine. Um, I've seen people flip them in grass mats and you know have perfect um, you know usage of all of them. Um, they have drop shot weights, everything like that. I'm just kind of reading off the email here. So yeah, I'll put that in the description uh, for the, the discount code. And again, like, subscribe, comment below what kind of videos you guys want to see next. If you guys want to see more swim bait videos, if you want to see more South Florida saltwater fishing, freshwater fishing, canal fishing. So yeah, other than that, just have a great day and tight lines.